Skytra, basically cash settled futures and options contracts, allowing airline customers to hedge risk uh, around airfares. How does this work and why does it make sense for Airbus to be getting into uh, a, financial, a financial instrument like this? Well, if you, if you think about it, the industry has morphed over the last 10 to 20 years um, from an industry that was really focused on cash generation to one that's been focused on profitability and predictability. And as it looks at predictability, it's come up with um, various way, ways to hedge its cost. And when you think about the cost side, you think about fuel, currency, interest rates. The one thing that to date has not really been predictable or as predictable as it could be in terms of financial performance has been revenue. So as a partner with many airlines and understanding what the airlines are looking for, and I would say an aligned partner, because we too want a predictable airline industry, we, we um, put a team together and came up with a concept using data, a large amount of data, to analyze um, uh, flights and fares from around the world, and that's how and why we launched uh, Skytra. We think this will enable airlines to be able to look, be more forward-looking and more stable in their performance going forward. So the reality of this is we are trying to help our customers because we are truly, we want to be aligned and we want them to succeed. So fundamentally, um, it's about the ability to, to, to aggregate the data, analyze okay. the data, and make decisions. I mean, as, as you're probably aware, and it may be true of your own travel practices, that most yeah. people, 90% of, of travel, the decision occurs within 90 days. But the commitments yeah. that airlines make are long-term commitments, whether they're for airport infrastructure, whether they're for airplanes, which obviously we sell. Um, they're long-term, 20, 25-year commitments. So having a more predictable revenue stream, we believe, will be yeah. very, very helpful to them. So that, that's yeah. the basic concept, Morgan. Okay. In some ways, it almost reminds me of some of the attempts we've seen with trucking uh futures as well. I'm curious about the timing, though. What spurred this? The 737 MAX grounding, subsequent industry scramble for more capacity, did that play a role here? Not. Uh, this is something we've been working on for two to three years, and it's just something that we had heard was, um, was uh, airlines continually asked and talked about this, and we felt that there was a need that we could help provide a solution for quite honestly. It had nothing to do with the other factors. We just saw a need and, and we thought we had a solution. You announced recently increased investment plans, plans to ramp up production for the U.S. made A320 jetliners to seven a month by the start of 2021 from five currently. How much of this is driven by demand as that 737 MAX grounding continues to put pressure on airlines versus the presence of tariffs on Europe made planes post WTO ruling? Well, it's, it's about demand. The reality is we are sold out for six years on our single aisles. And that's because we, we believe we just have a terrific product that there is a lot of demand for. And because of that, we've made a decision, by the way, globally to increase production to meet the demands and requirements of our customers. So we have, um, we've increased rate, we're increasing employment. Now, specific to the tariff issue, um, fundamentally, mobile, airplanes that are produced in Mobile are not tariffed. We're not a believer in tariffs. We don't see how that helps anyone, including the industry or the economies globally. But airplanes produced there are not tariffed, and the, our, um, so, so we will and we will deliver U.S. airplanes to to Mobile uh, to. Uh, uh, from Mobile in the U.S. Uh, Jeff, the CEO of Southwest was on CNBC this morning saying that it, it wasn't essentially just a bluff. It's, he was talking about moving away potentially from being Boeing exclusive. Do you think Airbus has been making inroads there with a, with a customer like Southwest? Is this a real opening, you think, to uh, get more business? Well, I'm not going to get into specific uh, campaigns, but I will, will say this. We believe we have the right product in the A220 
and 320, but specifically the 220, to fulfill the needs of a number of airlines, and Southwest fits that, um, that grouping. So um, we, we continue to have close relationships with all the airlines, and um, we, we, we have conversations, but I certainly wouldn't uh, get into these, those discussions publicly. Jeff Their focus, Long-term. as Gary said, by the way, is, is to get the max in the air, and uh, we would respect that. Longer term, uh, people still wonder uh, if this duopoly ever gets busted by a large uh, OEM that comes to, comes to market with a competitive product, uh, namely the Chinese. I wonder how far along you think they are in, in busting into this two-way street you've had with Boeing for, for several decades. Well, one, they, they have an airplane that they hope to get certified within the next year or two. Um, they are a, a, uh, a real competitor in terms of their ability to innovate. But on the other hand, we need to get better every day. Um, we, we feel we have terrific products. We need to continue to, um, to innovate on those products and make them better. It will take anyone time to get into this market in any significant way. When you think about the numbers of airplanes necessary to displace a, um, a major competitor, it is significant. Um, but we take the Chinese threat and other threats very, very seriously. That's why we, we put so much money into R&D and, and relationships and ensuring we're bringing the best possible products forward. You just mentioned the A220. We had reports last week that Bombardier is considering leaving its venture with Airbus uh, around the making of that aircraft, rising production costs, the fact that the company's cash strapped as it deals with a number of issues, including in its transportation business. What's going to happen to the production of that aircraft, which is made, uh, at least some of them, made in the U.S.? Well, the, the production of the aircraft will be unaffected by any changes in shareholding or any potential chair, uh, changes in shareholding. Um, we continue to produce uh, the airplane in Maribel, and we will be producing uh, airplanes for the U.S. in Mobile. Um, we, are, we will have that facility finalized in uh, mid, mid this year, and we will, start, uh, we will actually be delivering airplanes at that point. So changes in the, uh, in the shareholders will not affect the actual production of, of the airplane itself. Okay. Uh, I want to get your thoughts on the supply chain as well. Obviously, this Boeing production halt, you share some of the same suppliers. How does that pause affect Airbus? On the one hand, does it enable you to push suppliers to make components more quickly, given the fact that there's maybe more, um, more capacity on their ends? Or is it something that concerns you, given the fact that the longer that halt drags on, you could see some of those companies in more questionable financial positions? Well, the reality is I think the industry is better if, if we have a healthy supply chain. And these types of events, it, it's different supplier to supplier, but generally um, these, these types of events are not helpful to the supply chain. You saw Spirit had to take some action um, with their workforce. And, and that does create issues. Our, our view is that we are looking for a healthy supply chain and short-term issues that have come up that, that neg- negatively affect the sp- supply chain are not a plus for us or anyone else. Um, we, we are looking for a healthy supply chain that can continue to grow. Morgan, as, as I had mentioned earlier, um, we have a huge backlog. We need the supply chain to come along to invest and to grow with us. So, Jeff, I also just want to shift gears. I want to get your thoughts on the outlook for defense and space, given the fact that you do have a defense business here in the U.S. and also a commercial space business, including those satellites you're making with OneWeb. What do you expect for this year and beyond? Well, um, specific to defense and space, we are, uh, we've gone through a bit of restructuring in our defense and space business here in the U.S. and globally. Um, when you look at, at the global construct, our, uh, the CEO of our global defense business has talked about some of the actions that, uh, that need to occur. But our view is that we have some terrific products, and um, with those products, we, we think there will be some interesting opportunities. Specific to OneWeb, we think we are a leader in the, uh, in the uh, LEO constellation. 
And because of that, that is creating opportunities already for us in terms of customers and um, interest in the product.